Unplugged activities provide students the opportunity to think like a computer scientist and apply that thinking to content. These activities are usually hands-on experiences where students become familiar with CT terminology. Unplugged activities also give students a low floor and high ceiling effect, since students should have some instant success and a more open-ended way of approaching content. Good morning, everybody. Today, you are all going to be board game designers. You can think about board games that you've played before and think about what patterns are present in those games. Algorithms help us organize the steps to complete a task. For professionals, algorithms is how they code robots, how they design games, and how they get that tasty cereal in every single box. Real-world problems, along with criteria and constraints, provide authentic ways for students to be invested in the problem and see the connection beyond content. You're all going to be using the sticky note method. You're going to think all of the ideas that could be true about your board game, and you're going to write each idea on a post-it. Today, we're going to be using a flowchart to help us make decisions in our game and to determine what steps the players are going to take. And what's the first thing that happens after a player's turn starts? Um, you have to pick a card. Pick a card. Now, let's say maybe that card has two different things on it. So what might those two decisions be? Maybe to draw another card or to use that one. Awesome, so maybe we come to a decision point in our game. As we go, we'll continue adding blocks to our flowchart to figure out all the different parts of our board game and how our players are gonna move through the board. Sometimes the only way to see if our ideas are gonna be able to become reality is to just try them out. And one of the best ways to do this is to share our ideas with others to get feedback. I want to be able to like have the option of using a card or getting rid of a card, but I don't know many games that do that, so I'm trying to think of a solution to do it if you guys could help me. In some games, they have a discard pile to kind of can contain the ones that have been used and separate from the ones that are able to be used. So you could do something like that. I think this is going to be a simple game where everyone starts at age one and you keep picking cards to either advance in the ladders or shoots or stuff like that. You get a birthday card, you get an advanced one, or you get a sort of card and you go five steps back. So most of your steps revolve around pulling cards and then just doing what the card says. Mm -hmm. Like with anything, we can continue to iterate and try different things but it's important that we pause and think about what has been accomplished. We can notice from our sharing that even though we all had the exact same challenge and we even took some of the same steps, that all of your games might be pretty different. The name of our game is called Royal Run. We have up to five characters in the beginning and they're trying to rescue the princess. My team, if you had more time to keep designing your game, what are some things that you would have added? I feel like maybe there should be more starting points so you can choose. The cards are all mixed up so you don't even know what good or a bad card is. If you land on the tiles in the bridge, then you can cross it. When you get to the finish, you become a sheriff and you have to play tug of war with the doctor eater. The computational thinking strategies I used today helped me a lot during the projects. For abstraction, we uh, share all our ideas and we're like, yeah, I think that that one is by far the best. It was just one thing. We didn't need to break any of the other things apart. It was just like, yeah, we chose that one. It can be very difficult with a group of people because everyone has different mindsets and what can be applied to the situation, what can't be applied, how everything comes together through just hearing other people's ideas, but also wanting to represent your own. 